It's Daniel Cormier. I am so happy to be joined by my Olympic teammate, Ben Askren. Ben and I were talking this morning about just the state of mixed martial arts and everything. And I go, hey, man, you want to talk about this a little bit on uh, my YouTube? And he goes, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, Ben's never one to shy away from talking and sharing his opinions. So, Ben, my question is, how odd was it to watch uh, – Saturday night, Jan Bohovic. First off, how did you score that fight? I can see how it could be a draw. And because, you know, especially like, say, the third round, um, it was a weird conundrum because you had Blockwitz kicking him. And, yep. you know, you thought, hey, maybe this is going to get finished because this guy can't stand up. He keeps switching his lead leg. But then at the same time, the other guy probably won the round, you know? So it was like a weird feeling of what was going to happen. Uh, so I'm good with the draw. Um, obviously that is the, always the worst case scenario for uh, a promoter. It was bad. But then like yes. right afterwards, we kind of had to start talking about what was next. And I said one thing on air that was, I said, you don't necessarily have to run it back, but at some point, Bova Teixeira has to be involved in the title fight because you move on from someone. But I was, I was kind of sure that the Russian had won the fight, but now I'm yes. not so sure. But, bro, what I wanted to talk about more than anything was <laughs> same night, Dana White announces that there's going to be an interim title fight in Brazil. So was that decision made too fast? Because Absolutely. He didn't, he didn't like the fight. He thought the fight was bad. But was that decision yeah. made too fast? Well, I think the first decision was made, made too fast as well. Um, so, I mean, I think it's pretty rare when – someone just uh, vacates their belt like Prohaska did, um, which put them in a unique place. And who knows? Maybe the UFC knew he was going to vacate. I I'm not certain on that. Well, so then you start going down the rankings. Jan and, Jan and Megamed just fought. Rakic, Rakic's hurt. Uh, and yeah, so now it's Glover and Jamal Hill. And the one you feel like got left out of the scenario was Anthony Smith. Um, but when you start going down this list of guys, none of them really have like, four, five, six, seven wins in a row. A lot of these, are they're spotted with losses kind of all over the place. Did you feel bad for Anthony Smith watching him up there? Like, he's actually sitting up there doing the post show. Yeah. They're like, yeah, Jamal Hill is now fighting. And he had no idea. He was mm -hmm. on air. Now, maybe... Not good. He, may, but, well, well, maybe he, his phone had messages from his manager that they were going in that direction and he was on air and he just didn't know. But to see his reaction, he looked sad, yeah. bruh. He yeah. looks so sad. Yeah. Let's let's hope that he had some messages on his phone. Because if you didn't let him know, if you didn't at least send him a text and said, hey, man. But, you know, all these people, they're not that far apart. I feel like Dana or someone, whomever made the decision, could just radio in to someone at ESPN and say, hey, freaking tell Anthony this is what's happening so yeah, we don't yeah, get this yeah, yeah. really awkward, weird reaction when he figures out for the first time. Then, you know what I'm saying? It's like something like you can get that message to him. It's just, oh, yeah, it was bad. It was, it I felt, I felt bad for him. You know what the worst part about it is also is that what's that? He's, he's got to be a bit guarded with his reaction because he works on television. Yeah. He, he can't, can't just say mother effort, just throw his headgear down. That would have been awesome. He probably should have done it. Just throwing his headgear on the table. I'm out of here. I quit. <laughs> Bullshit. He won't, though. he won't, right? Like he won't quit because. <laughs> Uh -huh. Got a job for post fighting. Yes. Right. So it's like you gotta be a bit guarded with the reaction because if you don't, then you lose yeah. that 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 cushion, right? Because after fighting, if you're not been asking and you have a hunch a whole bunch of businesses, a lot of fighters fall. If he does fall, he falls into the ESPN cushion. He throws down his headgear, fucking storms off the stage. You don't know what happens. You really don't know what happened. It would be so awesome, though, because you could do it just for, like, the act and the show of it. Kind of like, I got to be certain, this is maybe off topic, Patty the Batty, he didn't win that fight. But I love what he did. When he got the mic, he said it wasn't even close. It wasn't close. And everyone's like, there's no way he's right. But I loved it. It's what he, he sold that? it. You actually yes. like that. And Rogan came back to the table and was like, he said it wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there, so I think I think you can com confuse fans. Some fans aren't as educated. So I think there's two ways you go with it. You could go the super honest route, like, wow, I didn't think I was going to win. I was shocked. Or you could go, I won for sure. But anywhere, yeah. anywhere in the middle of there, I think you lose fans. And I think with his kind of like 
he's got that little McGregor uber cocky type thing. And so I think it worked. I think that's kind of what early McGregor would have done also. You know, he uh, that that whole thing was fun. The Patty Pimlet thing was fun. I enjoyed it. Yes. But back, back to the light heavyweight championship yes. fight. Now, Jamal Hill is favored to beat Glover Teixeira. Yeah. It's a this is a weird one for me. This is a, it's kind of a weird fight for me because first off, like you said, it was fast, right? The night of the fight, mm-hmm. you know, Dana has long said that we don't really make fights the night of the fights. But yes. there are times when it's done because even when I fought Stipe, he talked to me in the back about fighting Stipe. So yes. he, he it has happened before, but it was a bit unprecedented because we didn't really like for Anthony Schmidt not to have any fucking idea. Yeah. Was crazy. And his reaction was about as good as it could have been in that moment because I'd have probably just started crying up there. Like, this is some bullshit. Like, it's fucked up. Like, you just sit yes. there, like, this is bad. But when you look at the matchup, does it does it just feel honestly been like they did this because you didn't want to really do Dig- Figueredo versus Moreno as the main event in Brazil? That- so that's part of it. I mean, this isn't a terrible card. There's, you know, Burns and Magni is a decent fight. Yeah, but yes, it feels like that's part of it. If so, what it felt like to me, even even before this, is that they needed to have a light heavyweight champ as fast as possible. I mean, think about how long ago it was when Praska said, "I'm out." It was, was like, like two weeks. weeks yeah, three weeks ago. Not long, and we've already had two title fights <laughs> since then at the same weight class. So yeah, it feels a, it feels a little bit rushed. Um, it feels like you know what it feels like they could do. They could have done that the, the event last week, and then they have Jamal Hill and Glover, and then they got also they got Paul Craig, um, and Walker on that card. You got a bunch of like have it, and then shake it out and have the title fight and say, I don't know, April. Yeah, what happened right? to this division though? It was the glamour division. What happened to light heavyweight? Like, what do you uh, think about the light? I mean, I think your yeah. Prohaska is pretty pretty good. I think He's all good. these guys are great fighters. I do believe that they're all really good fighters, but. It does not have the cachet that it once had. Like you had all, the light heavyweight division was long considered the glamour yeah. division of the UFC. What I mean, happened? this is that goes all the way back to Pride, Daniel. Yeah. Remember Shogun Hua, Vanderlei. This, I mean, this Rampage, 205 being the premiere goes long time ago. Not anymore, though. Not, yeah, I maybe you know who knows. Maybe someone like Prohaska will he'll hold the title for a long time and become. But this he's really, gone for really... eighteen months. A very. That was a very specific number, right? Like, I'm out for 18 months. Like, he was like, it's a very specific number. Like, 18 months, I'll be gone for. Yeah. I never heard of an injury that's going to put you out 18 months. Have you? <laughs> 18 months? <laughs> I just, that's really that both ACLs is back in 10. Um, You know what I was surprised by? I looked, So I looked at the light heavyweight. When you asked me to do this an hour ago. And I looked at the light heavyweight rankings. And what's wild is... How many of these guys who came up fast and fell off fast? Oh. So, like, you look like Dominic Reyes. Yeah, he's going. Came up fast, fell down fast. Uzdemir was flirting with a title shot for a while. Um, so was... Uh, Johnny Walker was the Johnny man. Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker was the man? For a minute, and Corey Anderson beat him up. Um, and then Tiago Santos now left the UFC, another guy who fought for a title. Yeah, it's really weird what's happening with the the light heavyweight There's division. There's no stabilizing force. There's, There's not. No, yes, it was like Jones and then me, and then now it's like hot potato. Like the the belt just keeps getting. Jamal yes. Hill wins the belt. It will be the first time that a guy who hasn't, I don't, I mean, he's he's very rarely main evented anything, and um, he I don't believe he has. World, it'll be he has not had a main event before. I don't. I, I don't think event. so. But it's like, I think in terms of the light heavyweight division, he becomes the champion. The UFC will have to do some work in order to build the star power behind this kid because there just isn't very much unless you're a diehard fan. And that's no disrespect on the kid. But if we saw anything, when Patty Pimlet hit the curtain last weekend, the UFC marketing machine works. Because yes. that dude got reception like he was an absolute star. And he hasn't really beaten anybody to warrant that type of reception just yet. And on Saturday, he won a very... A one-sided fight, as he said, he won a very one-sided fight, and he moves on to whatever's next. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens with Patty the Batty. My son, yeah, I... who Patty Pimler was, and he doesn't even watch fighting that much. He was Your like, son? What's it on? What's it on? Freaking uh, it must uh, be TikTok, TikTok or something? Or you, yeah, he Patty Pimlet must be on TikTok and shit a lot with the kids, bro. But he's a nice guy. 
Like, I know, like, the whole yeah. thing with Ariel right now is going crazy. But, like, I sat with him and interviewed him last week. And I thought, why before he left, I go, dude, don't let fame change you. You're one of the sweetest people I've ever met. And then next yeah. thing you know, like, it's like his whole world is like, it's crazy outside of the fight game because online it seemed like everybody hated him. But in the arena, people were, like, in love with him. Really? So I feel like the online reception was good, but I just felt like people were... Bro, they turned on him with that. When after the aerial thing came out, they turned on him bad. Really? Like after, bro, you should look at the comments. Look at the comments under the I video I put with him. Look at the comments yeah. under the YouTube that I did with him. It was crazy. He was universally loved, and then all of a sudden it was like he did this. He did. I was like, wow, this is crazy. But in the arena, you can still tell that a lot of those people were there to yeah. watch him fight. He got a, he got a huge pop. Um, well, I just I think it was also people really struggle. If there's one thing MMA fans struggle with, it's bad judging. Like there's oh. one thing that pisses the whole M MMA community off, bad judging. And yeah. you know, I I, I text you this, and this effing Doug Crosby, <laughs> he goes fifty forty five for the loser on Friday night. Which I mean, a few of those rounds, I don't think Sabatel landed one punch. I don't know how you give him the round. It was preposterous. And then he turns around, flies from Connecticut to freaking <laughs> Vegas, and then does this. Like what? Fucking so fire this guy. You know what? People, uh, he still has a job. He still has a job. So obviously, someone likes him, or he has a way with. Oh something. my god, that annoys you though. The the, the bad judging annoys you because generally you don't text me about MMA. We're usually talking about wrestling stuff. You're like, dude, what's up with Doug Crosby? You just that was one that bothers you. That was that was the fifty forty five. I heard that score, and, and I was literally like. What in the hell is going on here? And I'm like, there's no way the other judges will score like that. And then sure enough, 48, 47, 48, 47 stats. That actually Seb Patel's fighting tactics. Um, it's almost like what someone would have characterized what I did, but I never did anything nearly like this dude refused, <laughs> refused to throw a punch. It was the weird Dan. Did you watch the fight? He controlled him forever, but he would not punch him. It was like do you love him so much that you actually don't want to hit him? Like, no, no, no. I know you're I holding they him. Hated each other. I, that's I thought I they, hit they hated each other. But he wouldn't punch him. It was like, you're on top of him. Just freaking boom, boom, boom or something. It was so weird. It was weird. It was really weird. I was thrown off big time. Well, well but it, it, it impressed your boy, Doug Crosby. Whatever he was doing on the ground impressed Oh, Doug my Crosby. God. Yeah, at least they had a, they had a sensible commentator in, in a Big John was like, Big John was calling it out. He's like, well, he's like on top of him, but he literally has not thrown a punch this round. So, like, that's not what fighting's about. You know, you're one, of, and I like Big John as a person, but you're one of the rare people that actually com com commends him on his commentary at times. Well, he nailed it on that one. He nailed yeah. it hard on that one. It's, you know, it's it's hard to be, go from being a, re a, a referee to doing commentary, and yeah. I think he's doing a pretty good job, so. Ben, yeah. thank you, man. I wanted to get your thoughts on this. I oh, I knew it would be fucking fantastic. I'd love to have you back more often, man. I do a show called Three Rounds. Maybe you should start hosting it with me. Let's do it again. My I'll man. see you. Hey, we can do it live next we week in Phoenix, Arizona. From Phoenix. Yeah, I'll see you in Phoenix, my brother. All right, Guys, see until next time, like, subscribe. Peace. Go follow my boy Ben Askren and all that he does. He does quite a bit. Till next time. Peace.